Hello from Newland. I'm Miss Neverbird, and welcome to my channel. I've always been fascinated by the way stories, no matter the medium, can inspire and draw so many people to rally around them, and they find something significant within it. And so for me, when the story evolves into something completely different than expected in meaning, becoming a symbol of inspiration for people that consume the medium in the process. This dish just proves the effective nature of stories, the human spirit, and how you can take something that brings one thing, but can completely transform its meaning into something completely different. In this video, I will be exploring the power of fandom in our stories such as Harry Potter and others, has completely changed my outlook on how an audience interacts with their chosen medium, along with the concepts of the taste of the author and content interpretation that I've touched upon in my first video. As someone who has unintentionally been part of fan, fan culture since the early 2010, 2010s, it's been quite a journey for me. As one who loves exploring stories and the effect they have on people, fandom is the perfect place to see how people interact with their chosen medium within their fandom community, which includes analyzers and reviewers, the shipping community and other parts that involve any interaction between the audience and the content. This leads to the concepts of fandom, media, and social psychology, which explores how an audience interacts with their chosen media. And what's so amazing about a community that exists around the work is the different reasons why a story might resonate with an, with an individual, whether it's for the characters, the world building, or the story as a whole, creating a diverse community around their favorite work that connects with different parts of said work. If you are interested in learning more about fandom psychology and other things I will discuss in the video, I will put some links down below. As I said, the way people react to something, the way they interact with it, and the fandom around an object is my main focus of interest. Take the world of Harry Potter, for example. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, fandom in existence, and I really admire J.K. Rowling, despite her flaws, for being able to conceive such an amazing series, one of the best modern series in ex at the moment. I mean, the world building, the creatures, the magic system, the characters and the metaphors behind the concepts and the comedy on the real world is extraordinary. What amazes me even more is how attached people become to these fictional worlds that are simultaneously excuse me, very real and that is due to the amazing cast of characters inhabiting these worlds that are fantastical or mundane. These are some of the reasons why I love storytelling and stories so much because they are a mirror of the society and culture that creates them, which brings us to death of the author and content interpretation. Stories are a reflection of the society and culture that created them, but humanity is very subjective and not every person interprets their work the same way. How each individual interprets content is dependent on that person's personality, background, upbringing at that time and what stage of life they are in. This is what makes the content interpretation so interesting. One person can look at a story and come away with something completely different than another person. And this focus back to what I said in the beginning about a story becoming something completely different than what it is meant to be. Stories evolve as people evolve, and when a culture or society's values or ideals start to evolve, what we end up with are stories that are completely repackaged into something new. But these stories that, that, are, still, that are still the same at their core, but completely different appearance wise. And that is completely amazing. One of the best known examples of a literary character is Sherlock Holmes, known as the most adapted fictional character in the world, appearing in book, TV, stage, radio and movie form. And over the years, the character of Sherlock has gone through many reinterpretations, has become a palim palimpsest. In other words, a cultural text that has been repeatedly altered over time as each new excuse me, Interpretation becomes superimposed over those that precede it. Sherlock continually evolves, embodying ideas and values often far removed from those in Colin Doyle. If you find the above section fascinating, this is an ex excerpt from Ted Ed's Wish, Who is Sherlock Holmes? I encourage you to give it a watch since it perfectly illustrates what I'm talking about evolving stories. And if you're also interested in reading more about this topic, I would also recommend reading Stranger Than Fan Fiction by Chris Colfer of Glee fame to get more background on fan culture. It is an excellent read and I absolutely adore it. Please note that this book contains LGBTQ themes. If you like something in this video, I invite you to please like and subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell for future content. 
If you have any questions, please comment down below. I would love to have a discussion with anyone about their fandom and the impact it has on them. I am leaving you with a clip from Dead Poets Society starring Robin Williams, who perfectly sums up my feelings for stories and, and, and as an INF, INFP, um, and I put some links down below to sources if you're interested in doing up more of what I've discussed, as I said previously. I am Miss Neverbird, and always remember to have a little faith, trust in pixie dust. Bye! No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. Now, see that look in Mr. Pitt's eye, like 19th century literature has nothing to do with going to business school or medical school, right? Maybe. Mr. Hopkins, you may agree with him, thinking, yes, we should simply study our Mr. Pritchard and learn our rhyme and meter and go quietly about the business of achieving other ambitions. I have a little secret for you. Huddle up. Huddle up! We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. Now, medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. To quote from Whitman, O oh, me, O oh, life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, what good amid these, O oh, me, O oh, life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. The powerful play goes on, and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be?